Hamster here, the unofficial mascot of our fair city. In front of the old city hall, which as you know is part of the Whatcom Museum of Art. I want you to meet Hammy, a chip off the old block. Hi folks, Pop told me we were going to take a look at Bellingham in the old days. Not exactly. We're going to look at our city of subdued excitement in the early aughts, especially the art scene. Cool. That was before I was even a twinkle in your eye, huh, Pop? <clears throat> Get behind me so you can see. Bellingham had a pretty vibrant arts community at the dawn of the new millennium. <laughs> On first Fridays, Gallery Walk, coordinated by the Downtown Business Partnership, was a popular event that drew many Bellinghamsters downtown. The Blue Horse Gallery was the linchpin of the downtown art scene in those days, having been in business for decades. Owner Wade Marlowe mounted exhibits that were varied as well as controversial, but very popular with the art crowd. Some of the other galleries participating in the gallery walk in those days were Works on Canvas Gallery, Gallery by the Bay, Malloy and Company, and the Little Gallery, to name a few. In 2010, the Little Gallery moved across the street with a dynamic show, The Art of Tango. Was the Waterfront Artist Studios happening back then? Oh yes. In those days, artists including Christian Smith, Tyree Callahan, Karen Francis, K.D. Little, and of course, Lorna Libert, were drawing crowds down to the waterfront on first Fridays. I must stop on Gallery Walk, back then and still is, Allied Arts of Whatcom County. They moved into their downtown space on Cornwall Avenue in the early 1990s. In addition to its ongoing gallery exhibits, it's been very instrumental in promoting the arts in the county, including a large educational program that puts artists in the schools. Other popular events sponsored by Allied Arts are the Chalk Art Festival and the Procession of the Species Parade, where participants outnumber the watchers. A popular annual event is the Holiday Festival of the Arts, which is a major fundraiser for the organization. Executive Director since 2009, Kelly Hart is the heart of Allied Arts of Whatcom County. The Whatcom Museum was often a participant of the gallery walk and was headquartered behind me in this red brick and chicken sandstone Victorian style building. It served as City Hall from the 1890s until it became the headquarters of the museum in 1941. In the late 90s and early 2000s, the museum stage exhibits here and the Syrie Gallery across the street. Just north of here, the Children's Museum staged fun and instructive exhibits. What about the Lightcatcher building? The Lightcatcher, just two blocks east, opened in 2009 and hosts a rotating schedule of art exhibits throughout the year and houses the museum's family interactive gallery and museum store. 
Were there any other galleries around town in those days? Oh yes, a few miles south of downtown is the historic Fairhaven District. For decades, Linda Gardner, owner of Lucia Douglas Gallery, staged exhibits of artists from the region. Unfortunately, it closed a few years ago. Bummer! Yeah, but some artists participated in gallery walks in their individual studios. The Morgan Block has a number of artists who show work regularly, including Ben Mann, Ron Pattern, and Nancy Canyon, to name a few. So, Hammy, I thought it would be interesting to see how our fair city has changed over the last 20 years. How are we going to do that? We'll visit some sites around town and show how they looked in the aughts by showing urban landscape paintings that Lanny Little did back then. You know him, uh, the guy behind the camera. Oh yeah, the old dude. Didn't he paint some public murals back in those days? We'll take a look at a few of the murals too. Our first destination is a few blocks south of here at Bay and Chestnut. So, Junior, did you know that Georgia Pacific operated a huge pulp chemical plant and tissue mill right here in downtown Bellingham from 1932 to 2007? Wow, I had no idea it was so massive. Holy cow, look at those steam plumes. Yeah, it was on 137 acres and had dozens and dozens of buildings. Toxic cleanup and development of the site has been very slow, but the granary at Waypoint Park is now a popular spot on the waterfront as well as a pump track. Construction just started on a project that will have 94 high-end condo units, underground parking, and some commercial space. There's a building a block from here that went through some real positive changes in the aughts. Shall we go take a look? Sure! The lower part of the building is blocked by a COVID hospitality shelter that was erected during our ongoing pandemic. But here on Lower Holly, the Barlow Building now houses Black Sheep Pizza. In the 1990s, the building was believed to be ready for demolition, but Bob Hall bought it and restored it to its pristine condition. The first tenant in the early aughts, Film is Truth. Let's go a few yards west of here. The rocket building at Bay and Holly is undergoing major renovation. When Lenny Little moved here in the late 1990s, he thought that the bare wall was in need of a mural as it was the entrance to Old Town and had great visibility. He researched museum archives and found a photograph of the intersection of Bay and Holly taken in 1906 and painted a maquette for the mural. Funded by Old Town Businesses and the City of Bellingham, the mural was painted in the summer of 1999. The shelf life of a public mural can be extended with regular maintenance like retouching and revarnishing. The Old Town mural was up for 22 years, but hadn't been refurbished for 10 years. So, Junior, do you know what these sculptures are called? Not really. The 22-foot tall structure is called Sentinel, and the smaller ones are called Archimedean solids. They draw from geometry, circles, faceted forms, and polygons. 
Installed in 2009 and designed by Northwest artist Ellen Solid, they make an impressive entrance to the city's art district. Awesome. So that's how it looked around here before the pandemic, huh? And the sculptures light up at night? Really cool. Here we are on DuPont Street, looking south over Maritime Heritage Park. Lanny did a painting from this vantage point in 2005, showing how the paper mill dominated the waterfront. Wow, it really was big. Hey, I can see the waterfront tavern. Yeah, and Lanny painted it up close a couple of times. Here we are at the Village Green in Fairhaven, where a big change happened in the year 2000. Take a look at this short video history of the Village Green mural. Hello, I'm Lenny Little, and this is a two-minute history of the Village Green mural. In 1999, in the historic Fairhaven district of Bellingham, there was a large wall behind Village Books just begging for a mural. A white rectangle had been painted where occasionally movies were shown. Five high school interns helped me paint the mural in the summer of 2000. It was designed to retain the movie screen and depict a scene of Fairhaven set in 1928. I painted my grandkids and dog Sophie along with the high school interns in the windows. Scores of businesses and families contributed from $100 to $500 and were recognized by having their names painted on a faux block. In 2003, the Village Green Park was built on the empty lot fronting the mural, so changes had to be made. Ten years later, the mural was showing signs of fading, so funds were raised and many artist friends joined in to help. Images of people important in Fairhaven's history were added at this time, including a life-size Gordy Tweet, Fairhaven pharmacist and historian. Fairhaven went through some changes at that time. Here at 11th and Harris is the Acme building. But before, there was a nursery named A Lot of Flowers. At that time, Village Books was in the Knights of Pythias building, the large one in the middle. But soon they built a new facility at the end of the block. This northwest corner of 12th and Harris was home to Fairhaven Pharmacy from 1891 till the early aughts. A block down the street is the new Orca building. And on a site that has been an eyesore for decades, the site of the once stately Fairhaven Hotel. Here's a short history. The Fairhaven Hotel, once the pride of the Pacific Northwest, was built in 1890 at 12th and Harris. Its Flemish gables, classical arches, and the use of red brick and chuckanut sandstone gave it an imperial grandeur. It had every modern convenience, hydraulic elevators, gas and electric lights, and golden oak furniture. 
The hotel's best years were in the early 90s. It was refurbished in 1898 and a few years later covered in cement and incised to look like stone, losing forever the harmonious combination of red brick and chuckanut sandstone. Soon after that, the upper balcony was removed, which in the eyes of many, destroyed the proportions and the scale of the building. It was then closed as a hotel and solely inhabited by the owner, C.X. Larrabee and his wife, until his death in 1914. In the 20s, it became a yogurt sanitarium, then Hotel Victoria. The tower and the front porch was removed in 1928, signaling the demise of the once proud edifice. In the Great Depression, it was owned by the city and changed into a three-story utilitarian structure. Various social clubs and the Boy Scouts used the structure for years. On July 26, 1953, a fire broke out and gutted the top floor. It was demolished in 1956. Despite the pandemic, construction of Fairhaven Tower was completed in 2021 to finally replace the revered Fairhaven Hotel. Thanks, Pop. I sure like learning about our history. Me too, Hammy. So, we've taken a brief look at our city of subdued excitement in the early 2000 aughts. We'll call it a wrap by showing more of Lanny's paintings and murals he did in those days. See you next time, folks.